Hi, Hi everyone. everyone! Hello everyone, and today we'll wait, be... Wait, wait, no, it's my turn this time. I am going to be teaching you guys a little bit of sing -ha. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have been nagged and nagged and nagged to do a video where I am teaching sing -ha. So I decided why don't I take this opportunity to teach you guys a little bit of Sinhala that you can speak as a tourist when you visit Sri Lanka. So what was that thing that we did in the beginning? So that is Ayubowang, which basically means long life. So you will notice the air hostesses doing this as you get on the plane and as you get off. It's always really nice if you could put your hands together like this and say Ayubowan in return Ayubowan. when they say it. Okay. So you can write it like this. I uploaded a couple of videos before this one in order to get you ready to understand this episode because when you go to Sri Lanka, everything is usually written in Sinhalese and then in Tamil and in English as well. So two words that I think would be important for tourists to learn would be please and thank you. How do you say that? So uh, please is not something we say often in Sinhala because the Sinhala word for us is Karuna Karala, which is too formal. We don't use it in everyday language. We just say please in English. Is it because it's too hard to say? No, it's just really formal. We don't say that word much often. If I'm wrong, correct me, Sinhala community. But I have noticed that you wouldn't say Karuna Karala in everyday speech. But thank you is something we do say very often is Istuti. Istuti. So if you want to thank the truck driver, or if you want to thank someone for a delicious meal, you say Istuti. Which takes us to our next section, which is how to talk with truck drivers. So when you come out of the airport, I'll see some taxis and most of them will be tuks, isn't it? Well, not most of them, but everywhere in Sri Lanka, on the roads, you will see a lot of three-wheelers around, which we lovingly call tuk-tuks. So if you would like to travel in a tuk-tuk, which is very convenient and very cheap, I would really suggest using a tuk-tuk. However, if you are a foreigner, most often than not, you will be swindled. That's true. I was with a friend in Sri Lanka. He took a, a tuk just down the road, which was literally like 200 meters and he got charged 200 rupees. So that's one rupee per meter, imagine that. What, that's crazy. <laughs> no, that should not have been. So the minimum you can be charged is 50 rupees, but I do believe that's been increased to 60 rupees. My biggest advice is if you want to take a three-wheeler or a tuk-tuk, you should always only go for a meter taxi. Now meter taxis will be clearly labeled as meter taxis in the front, in the back, and in the sides. And the best way to hail down a taxi, just put your hand up, you know. And most of the time, if you are a foreigner, they will stop for you anyway, even if you don't want it. Always ask, they can go to your destination before getting into the taxi. So why would I ask if I want to go to that famous temple in Colombo? Ganga Rama Temple. So if you want to go to Ganga Rama Temple, you ask the driver, Ganga Rama Te Yanna Puluwanda. Ganga Rama Te Yanna Puluwanda. Yes, good job. <laughs> so Ganga Rama to go Ken. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if so, if they say yes and you get in and you get to your destination and you want to pay, the price is always usually there in the meter. Make sure they only start the meter once you get on and are on the move. You know, they can be a bit tricky like that as well. So the price will be there and you can just hand in your rupees or if you want to know how much it is, you can ask Kiyadde. Kiyadde. Yes. Which takes us to our next section, which is how to barter. So bartering is quite important in Sri Lanka. It's pretty much done all the time. So it's like a national sport. <laughs> pretty much. So you have what? Cricket, bartering and smiling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Say you want to go to Peta, you got on a tour and you got to your destination. You're at Peta market and you want to buy something. So you want to buy a hat and the vendor is charging you 2000 rupees for a hat. And they say, oh, it's branded. So 2000 is about 10 pounds. Yes, I do believe. Which is a ripoff, by the way, in Sri Lanka. If they charge you ridiculous prices like 2,000, 5,000 rupees, you know that's too much. But since you're a foreigner and since you are a tourist, they will try and charge you and overprice you. So what can I tell them? So if you know that a vendor is overcharging you, you can just say vadi. Vadi. Yes. And keep. <laughs> Keep you can, yeah, angry. just say very, very. Very, very, very. Yeah, say mata onne, which is I don't want. Just walk away. Mata onne. Very, very, mata onne. No, you just said onne, which is I want. <laughs> <laughs> you say mata onne ne. Mata onne ne. Yes. Proceed to walk away. Yes, and most often than not, you will notice that they will reduce the price. Or if you think that it's too much and you say very and you show them the amount you are willing to pay, then they most often they will accept as well. 
Toruki and Nepa. Yes, that's a really good one. Good job. That's another one you can say. Be like, Boruki and Nepa means don't lie. <laughs> that's a good one. I've done some shopping. I'm a bit hungry. What would you suggest a tourist try as a first meal in Sri Lanka? For food that you should definitely try as a tourist, I would really suggest trying kotu, which is shredded paratha with vegetables and chicken and Very cheese yummy. and all sorts of yumminess. You can get all types of kotu, you can get vegetarian kotu, chicken, mutton, pork, mm, so good. <laughs> so if you want a kotu and, you, and you're not sure if they offer kotu, you can ask them kotu tinad or mata kotu oni. Kotu tinavada means, is there kotu? Kotu tinavada. Yes. And mata kotu oni. Mata kotu oni. Means I want kotu. So if you know that they offer kotu and you say you want chicken kotu, you say mata chicken kotu ekak oni. Mata chicken kotu ekak oni. Yes, which is I want one portion of so chicken kotu. So I, no, to me, chicken kotu, I want. Yes. Hey, there we are. <laughs> Good job. So I heard that the food in Sri Lanka is quite spicy. Is kotu spicy too? Oh, it is definitely very spicy. Unless you're getting it from a really fancy restaurant that's part of a hotel, it will definitely be very spicy. Can I just ask them to make it less spicy? Yes, you can. So you just say Sara Aduin. Sara Aduin. Sara. Sara. Aduin. Aduin. Yes. Sara Aduin. But if you still don't trust that to be um, reduced enough, you can always say Sara Epa. Sara Epa. Epa. No, Sara is the name of Portuguese. <laughs> Sara. Sara. It's like the same. Not Sara? Sara. Oh. It's not Sara. No, Sara is the English person. Oh. Mm. Sara. Spicy Sara. <laughs> Do you have to have your face like that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so after you had a kotu, I would really recommend having a Sri Lankan milk tea because they are yummy. And very, very sweet. How would I ask them to put less sugar? Okay. That was a problem I had when I went there. <laughs> okay, so Sri Lankan tea can be very sweet because we do like our tea sweet. Um, if you want less sugar, you can say Sini Aduin. Sini Aduin. Yes, Sini Aduin, please. Or if you want a little bit of sugar, you say Sini Tika, please. Sini Tika, please. Yes, or if you don't want sugar at all, you can say Sini Epa, please. Sini Epa, please. Yes, <laughs> good job. And coffee. Some people are not tea people. Yes, so coffee. if you are a coffee person, the way we say coffee in Sri Lanka is kopi. Kopi. Yes. Kopi. Kopi ekak one. Yes, good job. Mata kopi ekak one. Mata kopi ekak one. Yes. And also, if you really want to show your appreciation for the delicious meal, you can say Rasai. Rasai. Which is tasty, or you can say Harima Rasai. Harima Rasai. Which is really mm. tasty. Yes. <laughs> Harima Rasai Istuti. Harima Rasai Istuti. Yes, which is it's really tasty, thank you. Mm -hmm. And do this in your belly as well, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> so that wraps up for today's video. I hope this has been helpful. If there is any other words or sentences that you would like to know to say in Singhala, while you're traveling around, do let us know, comment below, and we can help you with that and maybe add that to our next video as well. Yes. So, How do I say see you next time or goodbye? Um, so there's no expression for see you next time, but we do have an expression saying Gihingenang, which is I will go and come back. Gihingenang. Yes. I will go and come back. Yes. Oh. So Gihingenang. Gihingenang. Cheese, tikka, 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 tikka